In this video, we're going to be talking about actions and Photoshop scripting. I would like to invite you all to our upcoming webinar on actions and Photoshop scripting uh, that we're going to be having on December the 15th. If you go to our website at pixelcreatorpro.com, you can check out all the details. It's a free webinar to attend. It is two hours in length because we have a lot to cover. But uh, this webinar is really about maximizing productivity inside Photoshop. And of course, we all know the more productive we are, um, the more profitable we are. And what I'm going to show you in this video is show you a simple task, how we would achieve that task with the Photoshop action, but where actions fail us here inside Photoshop and where Photoshop scripting can really be a huge benefit. And when you understand the task that we're going to be demonstrating here, then you'll get a better understanding of how you can take the same principles and apply it to your own production, your own workflow, and you can really see where Photoshop scripting is going to be a huge, huge productivity boost um, for your studio. So let's go ahead and get right into it and take a look at what we have here. It's really simple in this first example. You can see if you look in our layers palette, we have a shape layer with a layer stroke, a nice red stroke around it. And then below that, we have a separate layer that is a drop shadow. And you can see what we did is we kind of warped this drop shadow a little bit at the bottom to give the illusion that uh, this object is kind of lifting off the page. And you see that, you know, quite a bit. Now, if we go back over here and we look at this file, you can see that the drop shadow right now is actually applied as a layer style. And of course, we see this all day long in Photoshop. Nothing new there. But how do we, th how do we take just the drop shadow layer style, make it its own layer so I can apply a warp effect to it? Well, we've actually created an action that's going to do that for us. Uh, so let me show you how the action works. I simply select a layer, and then I come down here, converting a drop shadow, and hit play. And in seconds, boom, that's what we get. We get a new layer. Uh, it has the same stroke it always had, and but the drop shadow has been dropped to its own separate layer. So I can then come up to the edit menu and choose transform and choose warp. And then just a little pull here and a little pull here. And just that quick and easy, we have this cool lifted effect because of the manipulation we did to the drop shadow. Now, granted, this is not a task that we're going to be doing every day in Photoshop, but it is an example of a task. And when you look at how this action fails us, this is where Photoshop scripting can come in handy. So I'm going to revert this file back to its original state. And let's take a look at one example. And you've probably seen this every day if you use actions. But one example where an action would fail us. In the early days of Photoshop, we used to always have one layer selected. And I think it was maybe CS2, CS3, somewhere along the lines. Adobe thought it would make sense to have a situation where maybe there was, uh, for whatever reason, no layer selected. So if you look at my layers palette, currently I have a background layer and one shape layer, but neither of these layers are highlighted in blue. But if I click on one, that means that layer is now selected. So it's blue. In the early days of Photoshop, at least one layer was always highlighted in blue. But like I said, at some point they changed it. I believe it was CS2, CS3. They changed that function. And now we can have no layer selected. So in this event, if I were to hit my play button here on my action, we get this somewhat nondescript error message. And you've probably seen these before if you've used actions. The command layer via copy is not currently available. Well, that really doesn't tell us much. It doesn't tell us what we did wrong, does it? It just tells us that this function is not currently available. So I'm going to hit stop. And the reason, of course, it's not available is because we didn't have a layer selected. So one thing we could do is we could create a script. And we could tell that script to check to see if a layer is selected because this action 
assumes that there is a layer selected. And then we could actually have that script be the first step of our action to check to make sure that a layer is selected. If it is, continue. If not, give us some type of an alert that explains, hey, in order to run this action, you need to have a layer selected. So if we look at the individual steps of the action, layer via copy, that assumes that we have a layer selected. We already talked about that. Select backward layer. Delete layer stroke of current layer. Now here's a problem, because what if the current layer that we duplicated, what if it didn't even have a layer style? Or what if it didn't have a stroke layer style? We wouldn't be able to complete this step, and we'd get another ambiguous error message. So if we continue on, see it says make layer, layer styles of current layer, delete current layer, select forward layer, and then delete layer style drop shadow of current layer. So that's all the individual steps, okay? So if we were to actually duplicate those steps here inside Photoshop, let me just show you quick. We duplicate the layer, okay, check. We delete the drop shadow uh, from this layer because we don't need it any longer. We don't need the stroke of this one, so we'll delete that. And then we'll convert by right-clicking on the layer style, create layer, creates the drop shadow layer, and then we could delete the duplicate layer that we no longer lead. So all those individual steps is essentially what we recorded in our action. But what if, for example, the layer that had the drop shadow that we wanted to drop away to, to manipulate individually, what if that layer had a stroke, had an inner shadow, had uh, you know a bevel and emboss, had more than one type of layer style? This action is only accounting for the stroke layer style. Um, and likewise, this action is assuming that the layer that we have selected does in fact have a layer style and does in fact have a stroke layer style more specifically, and that that is the only other layer style other than a drop shadow that layer has. So it's making a lots of assumptions that may or may not be true down the road, you know, depending on the given project we're working on. So really what we need is, if, if we really had to, we could create a separate action for every possible configuration out there, but that would be pretty crazy to do because we have the ability to create a Photoshop script. And so in this webinar that we're going to be hosting, we're going to be showing you some different tasks that we could do manually with actions and automate that, but then where the action uh, fails us, we can then look at how to develop a Photoshop script to take into account all the things that the action won't allow us to take into account. So in this case, we're going to make a script that would detect if one layer is selected. If more than one layer is selected, it would do all the required steps on every layer that was selected. If a layer didn't have a layer style, it just would leave that layer alone. If the layer style, if the layer had a layer style but didn't have a drop shadow layer style, it would leave the layer alone. If the layer uh, had a drop shadow layer style, it would extract that drop shadow to its own separate layer, and any other layer styles that might be applied to that particular layer would be left alone. Um, so a lot of coulda, shoulda, wouldas in that particular example um, that we have to account for. And um, so it should be a really interesting uh, exercise to go through because once you understand the concepts and how to go about developing a script for all these conditionals, then we can apply that same concept to our own personal workflow. There are probably things that you do every single day uh, that it's the same thing every single day or certain functions that you do often enough where it makes sense to have an automated solution for. And that's what this webinar is all about. So I hope you join us on December 15th. Again, check out the website, click on upcoming webinars for all the details, and we hope to see you there.
and we, we hope to uh, get some good feedback. And also, if there is some type of task that you could think of that, hey, I, you know, I would love it if I could automate this particular task, whatever that task might be. Uh, drop us an email or post it, post it on our Facebook page, and we'd be happy to take a look at it and see if it would appeal to the broad audience and simply just create it for you. Um, so give us your feedback. Join us at the webinar. Uh, I'm really excited about this because this is something um, that's it's a very niche market. Uh, there's there's really not a lot of information out there on Photoshop scripting, but it is really an amazingly powerful tool, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. We're going to make it super simple for you to understand, and maybe super simple is a little oversimplifying it, but we're going to make it so you can understand it. And while, it, you know, any given task, I will tell you this, something as simple as this task might take us six hours to develop. And I'm just being crazy there, but it wouldn't take six hours. But let's just say it did. Think about, yes, it's going to take a little time up front, but if whatever task you're looking to automate will save you hours and hours and hours and hours in the long term, that initial upfront investment and the time it takes to generate this script uh, is going to be time well spent. So again, I hope you join us for the webinar. I think you're going to be really surprised at the things that you see. And we definitely would be interested in any feedback you have before the webinar. So maybe we can include some tidbits uh, based on your feedback. Thanks for watching.